pen and ink techniques. So uh, prior to the class to save time, I decided to do a pencil drawing of the gargoyle. I just did sort of the outline and sort of transferred the image over there. So I just thought it would save us some time. The fine line markers come in a variety of sizes and the size corresponds in the thickness of the line that the marker can make. So here you could see 08 is thicker than 05, 05 thicker than 03, and so forth. And 005 is the thinnest, finest line that you could use. When you use the pen technique, it's important to lift your hand every time you strike the paper to avoid the paper making a darker mark. Here we see two examples, one on the left where the pen is lifted, the other one on the right where we could clearly see where it made a darker mark. Keep it consistent and you make a mark and you just do it and it makes that. The closer they are together, the darker the value, the further apart, the lighter the value. So that's the first thing. The other thing that you're going to want to do is thinking about now that I've made the mark, I may want to bring more value to it, and then I'm going to be changing direction. And this is what's called cross hatching. And you could see here I kept the distance the same, and then as I open up, then I open it up over there, and then it starts to create the value. If I want to create darker value, I could keep building up, you know, by using the same number pen, or I can, let's say this is a five, you know, add the five, and now the value starts to get really, really darker and darker and darker as I could build up the thickness of the line as I, 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 on top of the cross hatching. There's another technique that is done with pens, and um, it's, I guess, the stippling or pointillism kind of technique. It's where you add little dots, and if you have them very close together, you start creating, let's say, this could be a circular shape because you could see the sense of value mm. by doing this stippling together kind of thing. And that's also a nice te technique. And you could also, just in terms of texture, you could also just do like a bunch of scribble that kind of go into each other. You see how I do that? You know, if I try to do a world texture, I try to do this, you know, kind of going around without really creating a straight pattern. And that's another kind of pen technique that could you could also do a different kind of technique. What I like to do is I like to build up my values from, um, from light to dark. I like to just kind of start building them up. So, for example, if you look at the chest, um, well, let's, why don't we do this? We'll do the, the nice, beautiful wing. The actual shape of the wing is doing this. That's actually the shape of the light. So it has a bit of a movement to it, you see that. So to be able to really increase this feeling of movement, I would like to have my lines do that at that particular movement moment. The circular part over here, um, I'm gonna use a really dark one, so I'm gonna see where I could find my eight. And I like to use the eight, and I wanna do like nice, deep in there. And this is no other than just me applying a lot of depth with the pen to make sure that it's gonna lift up. And then I could start to do
Uh oh, I'm drawing and I forgot to talk at the same time. <laughs> And notice that I'm kind of changing a little bit the direction of my wrist to follow the direction of the movement of, of that, that what's doing over there. <coughs> I could go back with the eight. Oops, where's my eight? And, you know, just help lifting it up, making the movement over there. And I'm also looking at the image that I see over there. But now there's a lot more texture to it you know, more depth to it. Uh, why don't I do, I'll just keep doing with this guy so I could go. If I go over here and I could tell. One thing I like to do is I do this with my eyes so I could see the value, put my eyelashes through, you know. really not much of a light here between the two of them, so I'm going to do that. And then building up the value. And I don't know if you notice I kept the fairly fine tip right now because I'm kind of building up the ground of the image. Okay, so now I have that value, but I also feel that I want to add some of that texture that we see around. So I'm going to do maybe a little bit of that technique. But for it to read, I would want to maybe use a three pin, you know. I think that this line quality is going to be pretty good to do that. So I'm going to add some of that texture just by, you know, doing some of the scribbling, a couple of dots. And now, I have a nice quality for that beginning of that wing. Do you, do you see that? You will continue to build up your drawing area by area by cross hatching. You could see in the eye area of the gargoyle that I also use curve line to show that the eye is actually a sphere. You could see the same technique applied to the beak. So, and also you could see that I have a mixture of stippling, a little bit of the cross hatching, all overlapping each other to create the sense of the stone in the gargoyle. If you apply yourself and take your time, you will end up with a beautiful, well-constructed drawing.